Hi friends, it's Mrs. Warren Graber. Uh, it's Thursday, March 19th, 2020. I hope you are all able to get outside today because it was a pretty nice day today. We're on day two of our ELA work from home schedule. Um, so that is to read and understand two bear cubs on page 132 in your journey's textbook. Um, and then to do some pages in your reader's notebook. So go ahead and open your textbook. I'm going to be reading our story. Like I said, we're on page 132. Two Bear Cubs is a play. If you look down at the genre, a play is a story that can be performed for an audience. So as you read, look for headings that tell you where the scenes begin. Those are part of our text feature headings. We've talked about those. Dialogue, which are the words of the characters, and stage directions. So even though I'm going to be reading this and you can follow along, this is really going to be a fun story that you can do with your parents, your siblings, maybe um, your abuelo, abuela, your titi, if they're in the house with you, because this is going to give um, pieces or... Um, these are all different characters that are going to have different pieces to read in the story. As we're reading, we're also going to pay attention to our target skill, which is story structure. And we've done this a couple times, so those are things like the setting, the place, the lugar, where the story takes place, the characters, those personajes, and the plot. Do you guys remember, remember what plot is? Plot is the beginning, middle, and end of our story. So really, it's just telling what happened during the whole story. All right, with that said, I'm going to get into reading our text. Um, like I said, it is two bear cubs. This is from a myth, and it is a play. So it tells us the characters in our story. So there's a storyteller, there's a mother grizzly, an older brother, younger brother, a hawk, which is a kind of bird, a fox, a badger, mother deer, two fawns, lion mountain, mouse, and a measuring worm. Our essential question is how do members of a community help each other? And I'm going to try and do some voices while I read this, so please bear with me. It might be kind of silly. Okay, the prologue. The storyteller enters from stage left. Many snows have come and gone since this story was first told. My people, the Miwok, live in California, some in what is now called Yosemite Valley. We tell stories of the old days when, peop when animal people lived in the valley. One story begins with Mother Grizzly going to the river to catch fish for herself and her cubs. Exits. Scene 1. So really, friends, you have to imagine a stage and all of this being performed in front of you. Setting. Remember, that's where it takes place. A forest and mountain. Stage left. Open sky dotted with clouds. Stage right. Blue cloth or painted cardboard across the front of the stage suggests a river. Mother Grizzly enters from stage left, holding a fish basket and stands on the riverbank. Her cubs, younger brother and older brother, enter and begin to play in the water. Older brother, laughing and splashing. Don't be afraid of a little water, younger brother. Younger brother says, I'm not, older brother. Mother Grizzly scolding. Children, stop scaring away the fish or we will have nothing to eat. Out of the water now. They obey, but manage a last splash or two. I want you to gather berries, but stay close and do not go down river. Strange things happen there. Mother Grizzly moves to stage left. The cubs move to stage right while playing and pushing each other. A berry bush appears. Older brother. Look at these berries. He picks and eats them greedily. They are so sweet. Taste them younger brother um we should go we should take them back to mother when older brother ignores him the younger cub begins eating berries too suddenly he rumps his stomach i have eaten too many older brother we will bring some back later oh i am full too pointing 
Let's see what is down river, younger brother worried. We are not supposed to go there. Older brother, taunting, starts off. I see only the river and trees and stones. What is there to fear? After a moment's hesitation, younger brother follows. Younger brother rubbing his eyes. I'm tired. The hot sun in my full belly make me want to sleep. Older brother yawning. A nap would be good. A raised platform decorated to look like a rock slides into view. Younger brother pointing. See that big flat rock? It looks so warm. Let's rest there. The cubs lie down side by side, stretch, and fall asleep. Storyteller entering stage left. The cubs fell asleep on the stone, but the stone was the seed of a mountain. As they slept, the stone grew bigger and bigger, higher and higher. His hand spiraling upward suggests the, mountain, the growing mountain. It carried them so high that only Hawk saw them as he flew by. Hawk enters stage right, waving his arms like wings. He flies past the rock, looks at the sleeping cubs, and then flies back off stage the way he came. Storyteller continuing. Meanwhile, Mother Grizzly wondered what had become of her cubs. Fox and Bear, scene two. Fox and Badger are on stage, leaning cedar planks against tent-shaped frames of poles. So they're lying the boards, like made out of wood, against something. Mother Grizzly enters stage left, calling, Older brother! Younger brother! Mother Grizzly sees Fox and Badger. Fox! Badger! Have you seen my cubs? Fox. No, I have been helping Badger build a new home. Badger. Neither of us has seen them. We will help you look for them. Fox, Badger, and Mother Grizzly search to the right. Mother Deer and Fawn enters, stage left, and seat themselves, grinding acorns. Fox, Badger, and Mother Grizzly return to stage left and discover Mother Deer and her two fawns. Mother Grizzly. Mother Deer, my little ones are missing. Have you seen them? Mother Deer. They have not come by while my children and I were grinding acorns, but we will help you find them. Mother Deer and Fawns rise and join the others as they move to stage right and then back again to left. They meet Mountain Lion, carrying a load of firewood. Mother Grizzly Mountain Lion, we are looking for my lost cubs. Mountain Lion sets her burden down. I will help you find them. All move to stage right while Mouse enters from left and sits. Mouse is weaving a basket. The group at stage right moves left and meets Mouse. Mother Grizzly, Mouse, have you seen my cubs? We have searched everywhere for them. We have looked in hollow logs and caves and in the berry patch and the honey tree. Mouse rising, no, but I will help you. Perhaps they went down river. Mother Grizzly, I warned them not to go there. Mother Deer patting Mother Grizzly's shoulder and glancing at her own fawns. Sometimes our little ones do not listen very well. I agree that we should look down river. The animals on stage move slowly towards the mountain. Fox stopping, pointing. Look, everyone, there is a mountain where there was only a stone before. All slowly raise their heads as they scan the mountain from base to summit. As they do, Hawk enters as before, flapping his wings. Mother Grizzly. I see Hawk. Cups. Paws around her mouth and shouts up to Hawk. Hawk! Have you seen my lost cubs? Hawk calling down. They are asleep on this strange new mountain. Mother Grizzly calling up. Please fly to my children, wake them, and help them find their way down. Hawk pantomimes flying towards cubs and being blown back by the winds. After several tries, he speaks to those below. Hawk calling down. The wind will not let me reach your little ones. Someone will have to climb up and rescue them. Storyteller enters stage left. One by one, the animals try to reach the cubs. Mother Grizzly tried several times, but always tumbled back. Mouse jumped from stone to stone, but quickly got scared and jumped back down. Badger climbed a bit higher. Mother Deer a little bit higher. Fox did even better, but none succeeded. Even Mountain Lion failed. When Grizzly Mother Grizzly sees this, she begins to weep. 
The other creatures gather around to console her, unnoticed by them measuring worm enters, Mother Grizzly sad sadly. Mountain Lion, you are the best climber and were my best hope. There is no one now who can save my cubs, measuring worm. I will try. The other animals turn and stare at him, and then all except Mother Grizzly begin to laugh. Mountain Lion, foolish measure, measuring worm, do you think what you can do with the rest of us have failed to do? Mouse, to talk or not, your name is longer than you are. Storyteller, appearing stage left. My people call measuring word worm to talk a gnaw, which means little curl stretch. He moves by stretching to, then curling talk, the way a caterpillar moves. Mother Grizzly drying her eyes. I welcome your help. Measuring worm begins to climb all the while, crying to talk. The other worms sit, staring, the other animals sit, staring at the mountain, watching as the worm stretches and curls in a climbing motion. Measuring worm loudly. To talk, to talk. Scene three, storyteller. In time, Measuring Worm climbed even higher than Mountain Lion. He climbed so high that the animals below could no longer see him, see or hear him. Sometimes he would grow afraid and stop when he saw how high he had climbed and how much higher he had to go. Then he thought about poor Mother Grizzly, so worried at the bottom of the mountain. He thought about the cubs in danger at the top. Then he found his courage again and continued to climb, all while crying. To talk, to talk, to talk. Storyteller exits as Measuring Worm finally crawls onto the rock. He bends over the two sleeping cubs and calls. Wake up! The cubs are drowsy as they wake and stretch and yawn. Older brother crawls and looks over the side of the rock. Younger brother, something terrible has happened. Look how high we are. Younger brother. We are trapped here. We will never go back to our mother. Measuring worm. Do not be afraid. I have come to guide you safely down the mountain. Just follow me and do as I say. We will follow the safe path that brought me here. Older brother. I am afraid I will fall. Younger brother. I am scared too. Measuring worm gently. Surely, Mother Grizzly's children are not so afraid, for she is the bravest creature in the valley. Older brother, puffing out his chest and beating it with his paw. We are Grizzlies! We are brave! Younger brother doing the same. We will follow you. They pantomime following a safe path in single file, with measuring worm leading. Older brother following, and younger brother behind. Below Fox suddenly spots something, stands up, and peers more closely. Fox, it's excitedly pointing to a spot about halfway up the mountain. Grizzly bear, Mother Grizzly, look! Measuring worm is guiding your cups down the mountain. All animals look where Fox is pointing. Mother Grizzly, joyful, fearful. Be careful, my children! Mother Deer reassuring her friend. Trust Measuring Worm. He has brought them safely this far. He will not fail you now. The animal animals continue to watch. They slowly lower their gaze to follow the climbers as they come down the mountain. At last, the cubs and measuring worm make a final leap from the mountain to the ground. The cubs run to their mother. Mother Grizzly gives them a big hug. Then she pushes them away and shakes her finger at them. Mother Grizzly scolding. Both of you have been very naughty. Look at the trouble and worry you have caused us all. You did not listen to me and went where you were not supposed to go. Older brother hanging his head. I'm sorry, I won't do it again. Younger brother starting to cry. I will never disobey you again. Mother Grizzly, gathering them up in her arms again. Be sure that you remember what happened today, but do not cry, little ones. It has all ended well, thanks to the help and courage of Measuring Worm. The animals gather around Measuring Worm and congratulate him. Storyteller enters stage left. Then all the animals decided to call the new mountain Tu Tok Anula, which means Measuring Worm Stone. This was to honor the heroic worm, who did what no other creature could do. He saved the two bear cubs. The mountain held his name 
for many years until newcomers named the mountain El Capitan. We my walk still call the mountain Tu Takanula to this day. The end. All right, friends, like I said, our story structure is the skill. Um, so if you had to think of what the setting and the characters were, this is something that you could do in your notebooks and draw this graphic organizer right here and write down the setting. What is the setting of our story and what are the characters? Here's another example of a story structure from Invasion from Mars. They have the characters listed, the setting, and the plot. So it happens in the beginning, the middle, and the end. If you Google story structure anchor chart, you'll see a lot of examples. Here's another one. Character, setting, plot. Also in Spanish, we've got the personajes, la, la problema, um, lugar o ambiente, and solución. Sorry for my bad Spanish. But these are really what we're looking for for our story structure. Um, your task today is to... Read the Bear Cub story and complete pages 43 and 44 in your reader's notebook. And then also, if you would like to then go on and in one of your loose leaf or a notebook, write down the setting for two bear club cubs, write down all the characters. Remember, there's a list in your book for that. And then the plot. So there's three scenes, one, two, three scenes. And again, these are, each scene has a heading right here. So think about what happens in each scene, because every scene is different. If we go back to the whoop, first scene, what are the two bear cubs doing, and where are they? How does that change in scene two? What happens in scene two that's different? Where's the mother grizzly, and what's happening in the plot? And then finally, in scene three, where are the characters, and what is happening? So what is the, where, where is the problem and what is the solution in our story? All right, my friends, that is our ELA lesson for day two. Um, I'll be posting, like I said, videos for every day. Please stay safe. We really miss you. We hope to see all of you soon. Um, and take care.